Yo, what's up? It's Gooch, the host of Diabolical Souls Presents, and tonight we do Cyberpunk Edge Runners reviewing episode one. But before we do that, I just want to quickly mention this is not safe for work and definitely not for kids under the age of 18. Just going to throw that out there because this is an 18 and above show, animated show. So I just want to put that out there for everyone. And tonight I brought some friends with me. I always bring my friends with me when we do these reviews, and I'm going to start bringing them on. So let's get them on here. Let's start off with this young lad right here one of my favorites big face what's going on brother <laughs> what's up baby what's up what's up how was the workout how how you feeling how you feeling um it's hard to lift my arms right now i should have taken a day <laughs> off but i didn't and that was a mistake tomorrow but i'm alive tomorrow you, tomorrow you can have a rest day you can have a yeah. rest day or i'll do legs you know you yep. just yeah, the pain yeah 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 <laughs> uh well let's uh continue this little pattern let's bring out tomby what's going on bro yeah, not too bad. How did you? How's things? Good, good. I'm glad you could join us for this one. I'm glad uh, we got this little group we got going on here. And uh, I know you play Cyberpunk uh, 2077. I've, I've been I've been playing Cyberpunk for a while now. Um, didn't play it when it first came out because of the issues that the game was having. But mm -hmm. ever since uh, Phantom, uh, the second uh, expansion came out, I've been playing it nonstop. It's great. It's fantastic. Yeah, you Absolutely you got me it. hooked on it too. Mike, um, I gotta bring out the original OG amateur. What's going on, bro? Original OG, I like it. <laughs> yeah, original I'm, OG. I'm way too original. White to have the label OG though. <laughs> <laughs> well, you were there from the beginning when we started doing these reviews, so you got to be the OG, the original OG. So sounds um, good. Yeah, and then uh, let's bring out this man here. He was with us with uh, Arcane Hostman. How are you doing, there, buddy? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm looking forward um, to this one. Oh, yeah. This one's going to be fast paced. This is going to be graphic. This is going to be violent. This is going to be a lot of fun. So, um, cyberpunk motherfuckers. <laughs> yeah. And of course, uh, we have him on, uh, for Arcane. We have him on for Scavenger's Reign. And now he's back for Cyberpunk Edge Runners. Zach, what's going on, brother? What up? Let's get this shit on the road. I'm doing yeah, a good yeah, drawing yeah. for this episode. I hope I do well with it. I'm always self-conscious about every single time I'm drawing and inking live. So I hope this piece uh, turns out great. What character I'm inking, we'll find out by the end of the episode. Awesome. Well, we got 21 people already. We're going to get probably a lot of people coming in on a little bit, but uh, I want to quickly say hi to Mr. Jay Goodwin. What's going on there, bro? Uh, the gooch is loose. It is. And one of our brethren, he's out in karaoke, and he's not even here tonight. But uh, I, I, you know, I understand. He's, he's here in spirit. Shame him. He's here in spirit. Shame, Shame him. Uh, Eraserhead, thanks for joining us, bro. Uh, you've been one of the consistent uh, followers. I appreciate one of the original uh, Gooch Army. You, you could consider yourself like a colonel yourself. Uh, Den Genovesi, uh, what's up? How's it going? Uh, Curtis Lee, uh, Cancino, a better intro than the actual show. Thanks, bro. I appreciate that. Uh, <laughs> um, Nas, my blow bro. Arcane is gay. Let's react to some high tea. Oh, there we go. It's it's starting already. Oh, yeah, so um, your general thoughts uh, before we start, your general thoughts about, have you watched, all of you watched the whole series or just, just the first episode so far? I'm at episode well, six. Okay. General thoughts. Four. Okay. General thoughts so far uh for me i gotta say um it's definitely a different type of sci-fi i'm mean, being a huge sci-fi guy this uh never been uh never played the game entering the show uh the show threw a lot of things at me that it was like it was like it was expecting for me to know already so i had to kind of watch a couple episodes over again just to understand if what I'm seeing is flowing with some of the things that I'm expecting is about to happen later on. So um, it's a good show. I really like the animation. I'm also, uh, I just, you know, being a fan, breaking into the anime scene with Berserk and Full Metal Alchemist and stuff, I'm not used to the anime style of this kind of. So I really love the direction of the artwork that I'm seeing and how different it is to some of the American animation stuff that I've growing up watching interesting and jay goodwin says i hope zach isn't wearing pants <laughs> <laughs> uh big yeah, ship yeah. yo 
bag fresh out of the dungeon. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah, he is. Yeah, he is. Um, well, I know um, I got into, I'm not going to lie, I've watched this series. I've watched it actually a few times. But then I like I didn't really know about the game, the PC. Well, I have it for PC, but I didn't know about the game, um, or I might have forgot about it. And then I saw Tommy playing it, and I was just like, "This looks legit, sick." So, like Tommy, you have your take on it already. So, yep. what's your general thoughts on this series so far? The I, and the thing is, I'm going to echo some of Zach's thoughts on this one because what you pick up from playing the game. Um, immediately gives you a head start in understanding some of the language that has been used, some of the events and how brutal things are in Night City and the life that it is in Night City. Because it is brutal. You just do some of the quests in the PC, very quickly you understand the way the world works. You've got mm -hmm. your lower tiers of people, you've got your upper tiers, you've got your groups, you've got your corporations. All of that bleeds through in the game and you can see how much that's come through in the uh, TV program and there's so many Easter eggs in the TV program so far so I'm only a couple of episodes into the series uh, because I wanted to save it for these reviews um, mm -hmm. but there's so many little things I've picked up especially from the first episode so I can't wait to talk about it yeah me too um, Bagface what's your general thoughts there brother um, so I started the show yesterday and finished mm -hmm. it today oh, nice um, yeah <laughs> I have no life it's <laughs> <laughs> pretty good i also played the game for a bit i played it on release though which wasn't a good idea it's um, fixed now yeah, yeah i've been meaning definitely. to go back to it but it's just such a scar in my memory but um <laughs> yeah no the show is pretty i really love the animation style the voice mm -hmm. acting is really really on um there's just like a few things later in later on that i'm like hmm, yeah interesting yeah but i'm excited i'm excited to deep dive it yes I, I look forward to that uh same with amateur what like usually like the deep dive deep too so what are your general thoughts when you're watching the show yeah i mean um i did watch it uh just shortly after it was released which i think is over a year now um i really did like it i do have some issues with it which we'll get into but like i'm having a hard time remembering like the the later half just because it's been so long but um yeah first episode pretty strong um get a good sense for our main character for sure um i'm definitely very familiar with the game i've played it way more than anyone ever should <laughs> i think i've played through it like four times now um and i was also kind of familiar with the uh the concept of like a cyberpunk dystopia uh, a few years back well all this is based off of um i believe his name's will gibson the guy who wrote uh neuromancer which is like i think the og no. cyberpunk it's based off of the uh... It's based off of a tabletop by a guy named Mike Pond Smith. Yeah. Okay. Well, like the like the cyberpunk dystopia, like sort of genre of science fiction. I don't know if he invented it or not, but I think he was yeah. the first one to sort of like write it into a into like a piece of media. But yeah, love the game. Definitely like a thousand and one Easter eggs for people who played the game and watched the show. Everything from like the sound of the the sound of the uh, ringtones to, you know, all of the corporatized witchy mahoozits. Yeah, it's really good. Definitely um, not as good as Arcane. Nas can screw right off of that. <laughs> <laughs> um, a quick shout out to our, our brother, uh, Zax. Uh, just get better, brother. Uh, he's been, you know, struggling to get healthy. Uh, so we want him to get healthy and get back to streaming. Uh, get better soon there, bro. And go and go check out his channel as well. Yeah. Uh, so, Hostman, you're the last man to give his take on this, and then we can dive right into it. General oh, my Thompson. gosh. Oh, my gosh. I, I came completely unprepared. Oh, dear. <laughs> no. Uh, no, I thought it was really good. I played a bit of the game on launch, but, like, anything that wasn't a good idea, I was kind of soured by it and the way it portrayed the thing, the way it portrayed the game's world. I thought it was a bit too, like, clean, if that makes any sense. And a bit too, oh, good guys versus bad guys, resistance versus evil corpos, whatever. So I did a bit of research into the tabletop that it's based off of, and it's a much like darker and grittier world. And I think uh, this show kind of captures the feel of the tabletop game more than the more than the actual game did. 
nice really good stuff yeah well let's let's jump right into it then um so uh, viewer discretion is advised uh, yes strongly yeah. advised this is a this is a definitely r-rated uh you know animation or anime hard think, r uh done by um yeah hard r uh studio trigger the japanese company that did this the animation for it so <clears throat> this is um the first scenes here with david uh the intro uh, then we get right into uh nope this what episode do i have here that's I episode say, four, this, my this dude. Is an episode uh, one. That's, yeah this is episode four by my, my bad um <laughs> spoilers oh. <laughs> whoa, whoa. look away um, spoilers look away yeah i'm just like what um let me bring it up here bag face uh vex wants you to take your shirt off <laughs> <laughs> She's so thirsty. Thirst trapper. You got to send the super chats for that. Sorry, Vix. (laughs) (laughs) What are you, an East stripper? Okay, there we go. Uh, We'll get to it. Yeah, here we go. Okay, uh, so we start off. uh, This is the uh, Night City. Uh, This is year is 2076. Uh, This this episode is called uh, Let You Down, and you'll see why. Uh, as it zooms into the city, we see like the lights, uh, how crazy uh, neon, like kind of like, similar to Blade Runner, that neon noir kind of look. Um, and then we get into this scene right here. Uh, this is James Norris. Uh, we see this guy, he's just kind of standing there. Um, we have a bunch of police, uh, that are arrived. Um, the uh, new city police department are there. And the surrounding him as he's kind of in uh, the Corp Center, like uh, the Corpo Plaza. The, the Corpo Plaza, yeah, he's standing there, and uh, he also starts to like just go nuts. He goes up to this police officer and just like like you saw in the intro there, he just shoots the guy in the head and just boom. I love that piece and of dialogue. Great right? to see blast him too. It's just like, why are you looking to get shot? Ka-doosh. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't take long. It, it it gets right into it, like right off the hop. So I mean, it's it's insane how quickly they get to the violence in the show. Um, yeah, just, yeah. And just a point of clarification: this show takes place one year before the events of the game. Yes, that's why I said twenty seventy six. <clears throat> just because people are going to think cyber uh, cyberpunk twenty seventy seven. That's where the game. Uh, we got a lot of people showing up in the chat as well, trying to catch up. Thanks, Steve, for joining us. Uh, Vex, thanks for joining us there, Vex. And Tim, Tim Dog, thanks for joining us. And Adam Gray, thank you, Adam. Thanks for watching. Uh, we've got a lot more. We've got like 33 people in, in the chat so far uh, with Twitter and uh, YouTube. And there's just all everything starting to come in. So <clears throat> continue with this. And you guys just chime in whenever you want me to stop and to look at a scene. Just chime in. Uh, just like the other shows, so yeah. So James Norris, uh, I guess he like he was like a former lieutenant colonel of the uh, United New United States Army, um, and uh, he just they call it he went cyber psycho in the in the in the city city center, and he's like killing all these the police officers um, like right off the hop. I think he kills up like up to twenty seven officers, and then uh, as we t- continue going here. And like he's just letting loose, and then you see like the spinal um, cyberware that he has in his spine starts to light up, and he starts to like start. He does that, you know, um, well, this little part right here. This part right here starts to go off, and then he just starts to like do that uh, Neo thing from like uh, Matrix. He just kind of starts to dodge float bullets. around, yeah, dodging bullets and time. just moving around, yeah. It reminds me of Windows XP when you would go to drag a dead window and it would just replicate <laughs> itself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like, I really like this stylistic choice where it just shows frame after frame after frame to kind of give you a sense of how fast he's going. What's up, AJ? Yeah, it, 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 it starts like it starts off hot and heavy right off the bat. And like you're kind of like, okay, this is going to be a really, really intense show. 
and then we we get into it more with the, the um, I think they're called the Max Track. I think they're they're called the specialty unit. They come in and they're like they start paralyzing them and yeah, shooting. I think it's them. Max Max Tac, like Max Tac Tactical or whatever. It's like a okay. It's like a Militech um, mercenary group that they like hire in when the police can't or like don't suffice or whatever. Okay. There's like a whole lore reason why they do that, but we'll get into that later. Yeah. Uh, and then, yeah, they're just, they're taking them out and <clears throat> paralyzing him. They're shooting him. And then he kind of, he's still a, like awake and he like starts like just letting loose on them. Like he's like firing his guns at them. And then this guy shoots him with, they, they call it an M179 Achilles, uh, this gun um i guess it just it totally eliminates you uh so i know tommy i know tommy you you've played this game quite a bit is that like also part of the game that that these guns and everything yeah i mean there's the in the game there's obviously there's lots of different game uh lots of different rifles lots of different uh weapons available to the players i haven't specifically come across the one that they're specifically using but there's so many different ones in there um it's i mean the, th the thing is is that all of the weapons are likely to be lifted and shifted out of the game so it wouldn't surprise me if there's things like this in there as easter eggs i mean we said earlier on in the um in the stream there's so many easter Ooh. eggs and i'm still finding little snippets and little things that are just uh coming out to me so yeah i wasn't aware of the rifle that he was actually using um but certainly something i'm going to be look looking for and I do know from the game, there is sort of like, like they don't want to destroy the cyber psycho because I, I don't know if it's, if, if it's just their enhancements are just worth that much if they're recovered, but I think they're also like trying to study the actual like illness because it's, they're trying to study it, this, uh, the yeah. illness, aren't they? Yeah. It, it's not something that's like fully understood. I don't think Yeah, it's just like no, when someone has enough enhancements, they just lose their mind. And they go crazy. Yeah, there's, yeah. there's quite there's the quite a few quests. Sorry to jump in. There's quite a few quests that I've done recently as well, um, where you are given the kind of like the bounty to go around and trying to put down the cyber psychos. There's there's loads of them all over the place. Um, oh yeah, and you can you can select them on your map. And you can go and travel, and you can you can take them down. And almost every time, the person that's fronting up the quest to you or the mission, as it were are all saying try not to kill them yeah. um and it's always that kind of line sometimes you just don't have a choice because they are completely out of control other times yes you uh can actually uh uh control uh control the situation you, you hand them off as part of your quest and again that harks back to those uh that tie-in between the game and the tv program it's just really really useful from a um from a person that's played the game to watch the program but I do feel for those that haven't had the experience of playing the game because you almost miss some of the um, some of the the kind of like the intimated detail uh, mm -hmm. because you're not aware of what's what's happening in the game and therefore you can't put two and two together at times not unless yeah. they spell it out to you. And those like yeah. there's like a million little stories that you like learn or like learn from some of the NPCs along the way and they're all like really good and. You know, there's like this real sense of humanity to it, and it really contrasts off of this like over corporatized sort of like post communist hellhole, right? And it's that it's that jive where the real story is, and and when you come into this show, bringing that knowledge with you, like the world building's already done, you know. Yeah. Then you can just sit back and enjoy and watch these, you know, written characters enjoy this world that you understand, which is, I th I th honestly think you're missing out if you haven't played the game first. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. I really like how much uh, the president uh, or how, excuse me, how present the threat of cyber psychosis is in the world. All the characters are constantly making references again. Don't go cyber psycho. Be careful. Make sure to take your meds. You don't want to go cyber psycho. It's just you always understand how much people, especially people who upgrade with bootleg software, feel about this uh, condition and what it means to the people who. Uh, are inflicted with it. Yeah, yeah the mystery and which. Oh, sorry. The, go ahead, Dan. Yes. Yeah, the mystery behind the psychosis, like it, it creates this sort of society-wide hysteria. Yeah. 
to the point where like you know the corporals are, are hiring more and more more and more um like ruthless mercenary groups and smashing down on even petty crime like you can see the effects of it and it's it's really good storytelling like there's just there's I mean, tension and conflict all over the place because of it this this actually yeah. harks back to uh, can anybody remember the johnny monick film with keanu Reeves? Yep. yeah yeah oh and my god the nerve attenuation syndrome um that they were all suffering from their cybernetic implants yeah it harks back to that so much for me and it's, there's so many little tie-ins that you could you could really see in the um in the past in in past films where they've it's almost like right okay nerve attention syndrome right okay i can now understand what it could be doing in the cyberpunk universe i mean let's face it we're all sticking um cybernetic implants and no one's got a clue what's the long-term damage that's going to that's gonna cause mm -hmm. thanks well uh, this is a good segue <laughs> to this part right here because we have that chaotic beginning and then we see david here and he's firing away like he's doing the same thing that james norris was doing before he was kind of wiped out and then we find out that he has what they call uh, BD, and it, it's a tech that they use to feel what uh, other people are experiencing, like like physical sensation, emotions, and um, thoughts, so, and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, it's, it's like a, a simulation <clears throat> drug, basically. So yeah. This, this is what confused me. When I first watched that, I like even watch. I had to watch the episode twice. And uh, the first time, because the first time around, I had no idea. I was like, is this a video game? Like, the intro was a video game that he was playing? Or um, or did it actually happen? And I didn't, you know, fall, I didn't catch it until the second time watching when it was on the news. And I was yeah. still thinking, even after, I was like, well, why would they have that scene right afterwards? It was still confusing. And that, ans and that got answered in, like, episode four or five or something. I mean, you look at you look at altered carbon, and they do something very similar in altered carbon as well, where they they're taking the memories of, of essentially someone's death and they're just replaying them over so that people can get the buzz and the adrenaline kick from re reliving the situation. And that's what's happening on the or, this brain dance that he's uh, that David's experiencing. Yeah, or yeah. Total Recall and the um, Philip K. Dick short story will remember it for you wholesale. Those implement the same sort of. Uh, idea but obviously those are a lot older than uh, cyberpunk as an ip is well and the, the crazy th uh, thing about this um he, it's only been a couple hours since they they got to james norris and they are he and doc um he uh, <clears throat> gave it to david to try out and because david is he sells these xbds uh, uh to students at school and yeah. on the streets and stuff like that uh, for for uh, <clears throat> for Doc, and so um, I, I beg face. Like, what are your thoughts with this like extremely high paced, uh, violent intro? Uh, I dig it. I kind of like the fact. Like, I know very little about the game. I think I literally played like half an hour and it broke. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but even the basic knowledge I have, and then I feel like if you just kind of let yourself be immersed in the world, it it kind of feeds enough to you that you you get a a good feeling for what's going on and yeah i i, I enjoy the intro i kind of like that you have no idea what's happening and then it cuts to this and you still kind of have no idea what's happening just kind of keeps you on your toes and really paying attention for the for the first few minutes which i enjoy mm -hmm. yeah i like the small well, background world building detail where the brain dances are basically the drugs of this universe they don't sell heroin and meth anymore they sell these and then you see these guys all skizzed out on street corner just like getting off to sexual fantasy uh bds and things like that instead of just being high on crack on the streets it the show does a really good job of showing how dirty the world was as compared to the game the game felt a little empty and sterile for me but this i'll give it props because it it, it feels like it's lived in it feels like it could be a city in New York or California these days, but just set how many 30 years in the future, man, I've heard that a lot where people felt like the, uh, like the video game cyberpunk was very stark and empty. And I'm very confused by that. Cause I felt that way about like GTA five, 
just you can't really go anywhere there's nothing happening yeah like really it's... and and i don't know is there like a setting to like turn the crowds down or something like it feels really full to me i don't know I, I quite enjoyed how busy and lived in it felt because like you know you go into any random street corner there's a bunch of hobos sitting there with like some piece of cardboard that has actual things written on it and like sometimes little stories are hidden in there and stuff and it's like there's there's something everywhere you look yeah there's something so going I'm, on in every corner that's, yeah it's actually that's what insane. I've come, come to look look at. i stopped driving in the game i just walk everywhere because yeah, there's just so around. much to discover yeah yeah yeah, I, I'm, yeah, I'm not a big GTA Five fan. I, 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 ne- I, I just felt like GTA Five is just like you're just out there just to do violence. Yeah. I, I, I like for me, I just I need I need a mission. I need something that you your your goal. Like you need to get somewhere and do something to get this or get that. I I just don't like just just pure stupidity. I I, I just think it's overrated. Yeah. Um, yeah. Cyberpunk is really RDR2 cool. Two are way better versions of the open world of the GTA open world format. Mm. Uh, so we're looking at the XBD right here, um, the brain dance chip uh, that he had inside that Doc gave him, uh, and he's talking. He's actually talking to Ripper Doc right here, um, and just discussing like you know, like he's, I'm still skizzing out over the Chrome like out Chrome junkies and and everything and um he's obviously got some more that he's going to probably hand out uh yeah. to students i like at, how he's uh... go ahead i like how david's just constantly twitching like you can tell that he spends a little too much time with the stuff he's just kind of uh restless oh, oh yeah, gosh that's... <laughs> that's a good scene uh <laughs> so yeah you, you get like he you asked him to check that one out and he's just like and david's like oh man like he even him he's just like oh man this is that's too much. So we get to this scene right here. David's like watching the laundry and it just dies out on him. Um, and he's just like frustrated because it's his school clothes and then he has to go to school. And then he goes into the living room and he, he sees his mom sleeping. She's an EMT. Um, <clears throat> and she's just sleeping on the, on the couch here. And we find out that because David turns on the TV here, while well, the TV's on, he finds out that she was part of the scene from the prior night. She's actually the one that, well, I don't want to say too much because like, we don't really know about it till later on. So she's asking him about the clothing, and he's saying like they're all soaking wet. He's asking her to please get it done. She's like, yeah, I'll get it to get it to you later. And then he's off to school, and then we get to see the world of Santo Domingo, and as he he's here and yeah okay well this is the part i was talking about so now we get to see the world of santo domingo which is really cool like how he leaves the house like he just kind of just drops down into garbage he's walking through like around all these bums and then he see you you get to other people on the uh, xbds later on here and then you're kind of following this guy's journey to get to school which obviously he's from the slums and he's going into the corporate world um where he's going to school at um i forget the name of the school it's uh araka academy Aris- is that right arasaka. Arasaka. arasaka okay arasaka i knew i was gonna say it wrong so <laughs> the, yeah so Can't like you, you get to see dirty japanese newfangled names <laughs> yeah well you get to see like this is a really cool like you know it, path of like you know the world that he lives in like it's 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 really interesting yeah. you're seeing like rockets take yeah. off you're seeing like the trauma team coming in they're coming to stop a fire on a building like and he just kind of shrugs it off like it's like nothing like he, like this whole world is just full of like dark trauma and violence everywhere and it, and it's like if we saw that we would be like we would be like, what the hell? We'd be stopping and looking out the window, trying to figure out what's happening. But this this is the world that they live in. He lives in. Um, and well, then not we if you live in New York or California. There's yeah, a nice little every, bit, every day. Uh, <laughs> yeah, this is there's a nice little bit of background foreshadowing right there. That strong arms uh, software that that little billboard is advertising that comes into effect later in the episode. Mm-hmm. The, um, the other the other interesting thing about the the whole setup of him walking from 
um, obviously his, his, his place of residence all the way to the school is that a lot of the things that you see on the route um, you see in the game as well and they're quite uh, significant parts of the game um, so as you're going through your various different missions and things like that there's, mm -hmm. there's specific missions that are really vitally important to the main story and you see an element of those flick in just to the side, to the left, to the right, up in the sky, and it's it's really good hook. Oh, the, and yeah. straight away for me, it just it was grounding the um, where he was within Night City, and I immediately understood everything that was going on around him. It's it's a fantastic way to hook it in. Yeah, it's it's basically a one to one of the game map. Like you know where he is. Yeah. It's like oh, that's the mega tower over here. I actually know where that is. You know, and he's walking around, and it's like yep, that's the bridge. You know, it's like it's all it's all the same. The only thing that's different is the ads. <laughs> like... Yeah, they talked about even the fish in this in this uh, animation, this part of the game. They wanted to add that as well. The the koi fish yeah. that yeah, this, oh, right here, perfect. Sky. Yeah, yeah. That's where that circle, that corp, the corporal plaza, that like big big turnpike. That's where that is. I think. Yeah, and it looks really so, good like, too. It's low, it's low frame rate, but it's hyper detailed. Well, okay, this it's interesting because I, I know we did we were talking about this in the back room. So they were talking about the frame rates for this series. It could be anywhere from thirty to sixty frame rates per second. Uh, I oh, wow. don't I don't see sixty frame rates per second. I see anywhere from like amateur said twenty four to maybe maybe twenty eight thirty frame rates per second. Bagface, like, what are your general thoughts about the animation in general? Because I love two D, so like I was just wondering what your thoughts were. Uh, oh, I, I love it. I, I was actually just talking to Vex today about uh, the new season of Invincible. I don't mm -hmm. know if you guys have watched the new episode, but there's like a whole self-insert section where he talks <laughs> to a comic book maker and about what it's like to animate a show. And it kind of sent me because things like this, you know, you're animating like sometimes up to 30 frames per second and the the like... Uh, fight scenes and the violence is also comprehensive and easy to follow and very impactful and then you know i watch invincible and i'm like wow like i've heard the animators in interviews like bitch for the last few months about animating this show they had to take a break in the middle and now they like put it in the show that it's hard to animate a show I'm like yo shut up there's so many amazing <laughs> animations out there where like the fight scenes are nuts and yeah, yeah, I don't know. I like I I appreciate. I also appreciate like the uh it's kind of like arcane where I feel like they're mixing uh like old school 2D style with like some 3D light rendering, which is yeah, always a cool mix yeah. to me. I love that mm -hmm. vibe. Yeah. It's really interesting in Japan, one of the trade-offs between uh Japanese versus western animation is that in Japanese animation, they're traditionally lower frame rate but higher in detail whereas um Western cartoons, like especially old Looney Tunes or Betty Boobera cartoons, they were high frame rate and looked a lot smoother, but they were far less detailed. I mean, Mickey Mouse even had his tail cut out at one point because it was costing too much for them to animate with the frame rate that they wanted. Yeah, for me, like I'm a huge 2D animation uh, fan, so I'm with Noss on this. Like, it, I feel like this is like it's like when i watched this the first time this is right up my alley um i was fascinated with all the detail everything about it like there was nothing cg about it that i could see um so like for robert kirkman and the boys to sit there and bitch about doing an animation like they have the resources they have they there's no oh, oh. Um, did we lose did him? we lose him what, oh, no. am I still? It, i'm oh, contagious <laughs> <laughs> oh, am I here? I'm here. Am yeah, I, no, here? I, oh. oh, I think it's just StreamYard. Something's something's up with this stupid hosting site. Well, I know. I don't. I think. I think Vex said that they're updating YouTube, so it might be YouTube. Uh, okay. Um, <laughs> they didn't get me. Not yet. I'll, I'll go down <laughs> with the fight. <laughs> I'll go down with the fight. Um, yeah, the hand drawn stuff they, moves they at twenty four, or like at twelve, but like yeah. Well, it, the show is rendered out at twenty four. So, regardless of yeah. how they animated it, you're you're seeing twenty four frames per second the whole way, start to finish. Well, but watching 
watching the background stuff, like watching the interviews and then like reading up on it, I was like, how the hell did they even get to 60? There's no way they're 60. And they said at 4K, at 4K, it's at 60 frames per second. I'm like, no, I don't see that. Um, but Are you sure you're not getting I, it confused with like the video game? No, no, I was, I was, I, I was looking at the game stuff. It was all like, cause it's the game stuff's all from 60 to 100. And twenty frames per uh, per second. Um, I was looking. I was looking. I was just like, "There's no way this gets up to sixty frame." Uh, well, see, per second. The big problem with that too is, especially if it's four K, um, you're starting to hit the limits of the bandwidth that Netflix can even give you. Mm-hmm. So, what'll happen if you ask it to do four K sixty f fps is it's going to either be all choppy on the playback, or it's going to use some sort of like um, progressive. Uh, like d um what do you call it like when it when it automatically lowers the resolution to yeah. cram it into that into that data packet so it can actually be streamed i don't i don't think you're getting 4k 60 that just that just wouldn't make any sense but well jay goodwin is saying 60 hertz but i i, I no they are they definitely are... not animating 60 fps that would be insane no. yeah that, that's why i was like there's no way it could be 60 fps there's they could, that's some like um so I, I would say this is probably around 28, somewhere around there, uh, 24 to 28. Uh, but yeah, this I for me, I love all the details. Like it's just incredibly done. Um, studio, what is the studio trigger? Yeah, um, they do an incredible job with animation, man. Like it's one thing, just like one thing that really popped out to me with the animation, especially after watching something like Arcane, where there's just so much movement, like nothing's ever standing still like with this show they're they're using the opposite of that to draw your eye so like things in the background that aren't important you know they might not be moving at all or they'll just switch back and forth between two identical frames to sort of like make it feel like it's moving but they didn't actually spend any time doing it which isn't yeah i'm not trying to call them lazy i'm just trying to say like they're they're sort of like way of economizing production is is Pretty, it's pretty clever. Like the, you'll you'll note, like you might notice that now that I've mentioned it. But like the way they can get away with not putting in all this crazy amount of groundwork to get the same result is is I think it's very clever. I mean, they're, they're focusing they're focusing the viewer on what's important. I mean, at the end of the mm-hmm. day, yes, you've got this bustling city that's moving all the way around you, um, but ultimately, what's going on in the background may not have any relevance or. Uh, any of them, any of importance to um, the actual story. So why do too much going on in the background? But yeah, exactly. One of, the, one of the things that I really, really, really loved was elements of the UI of the game, the sounds, the mobile phone noises appearing in the TV program. Yeah, walk, walk. You know, it's like, oh, that's yep. from the game. Shit. Okay. <laughs> yep. It's the phone ringing. Everything. It's just brilliant. Uh, this scene right here, where we see, um, well we're not introduced to her yet but we see lucy uh this scene right here reminds me of fantasia so much hell yeah um it, yeah, it's it's an awesome awesome animation i love it um a good throwback and so like yeah we're seeing david walking around through the city um and, and all its chaos he's getting into school he arrives late he talks about how he has this he mentioned earlier that he has this chip he got from doc that hopefully works for for class because he's supposed to update his his um cyberware and so he gets into class and we this is where we meet uh katsu and all the other katsu goons in, in class as they like throw insults at him uh the ai teacher is asking dave why he's not in the proper co- uh, uniform and he's saying it's uh, at the cleaners, and then the AI teacher asks, "Where's the, where's the spare?" And he's like, "That's being washed too." And so the AI says, "Like fill out the paperwork." So at the end of the class, as they start class, <clears throat> uh, he puts on a cyberware, and everything just glitches and burns out, and that's the end of class. And everyone's upset with with David. So then we get to the principal here, and he's talking to Gloria and David. Gloria um, Ramirez is uh, David's mother. Like I mentioned earlier, she's an EMT. Um, she's struggling day by day. Um, but she does do things on the side, which is not explained yet. 
so I, I will get to that later as well. I think we'll get that mostly into episode two. But um, the principal is just talking about um, a, a student like this, like David, he basically doesn't belong in the, in the school. Um, and I, she's really fighting for him to be there. Go ahead there, amateur. I, I love how um, the principal has the little desk lamp pointed at his finger bling. <laughs> yeah. Like, who does yeah. That? That's, that's a total <laughs> Chad move. Hey, bitch, look at this. Look at all this bling. You know, um, you know, I'm in charge here. Yeah. Well, you it's kind I'm... of it's also it's also an homage to like The Godfather a little bit. Um Marlon Brando. Uh right. so Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So there's a lot of like sneaky references in here that I've noticed too. Uh after I watched it about 8 times. Uh So yeah, gr- great great scene. So you're learning about David real quick. It's a really fast pace. Like we're only in like not even 10 minutes in and you're you're seeing a lot happening with his, the way he is living. Like he's very poor. He's living day to day to day. Uh, he's selling illegal brain, uh, brain dancing uh, software. His mother is like uh, EMT trying to, trying to make it day by day. She talks about how she's not getting paid. Uh, she has no money. She has to wait till next payday, which is coming soon. And then she's talking about school with him, how he has to try. She like, got, she sees him like being, um, breaking out of the slums and being working in the corporate world. And, mm-hmm. and she's like very proud of that. And David just says, the reality is it's never going to happen. They're always going to look down on me. Right. It's, can can I just point out one thing about the animation? Can you just pop back two slides? Yeah, sure. Notice um, the way that these two are sitting. Now go forward one slide. Mm-hmm. See, they didn't have to change very much about that. Yep. that um composition right They're, it's basically they just replaced the back layer and threw a shadow on it it's just it's so efficient and like the way that it's edited in here it's not jarring at all it's just like okay yeah we're moving we're moving right along and they didn't have to waste any time i just mm-hmm. I, I, I think transitions like that are very clever because you know you're not having to repaint or re you know, you know, you're not having to come up with a composition for a whole new shot. You're just you're using the same shot twice. Like, I, again, I just thought comes, that was a pretty brilliant example. Yeah. Again, it comes back to yeah. what's important to the viewer. Why animate a whole sequence where, obviously, they're walking out of the principal's office back to the car to get into the car? You don't need to. And mm-hmm. very quickly, you've gone from one scenario to the next. Yeah. Very subtle change in angle of head for him. The mother's almost in exactly the same position. And again, it comes back to that. Um, if they do it like this, they can cut down on so much time in, in terms of the animation. And there's no loss in kind of like the pace of the story. It's mm-hmm. perfect and, and, pace. And on top of that, like a like from an editor's point of view, they're also telling you that that for David, the interrogation hasn't ended, right? He's still in, as far as he's concerned, he's still in that mundane sort of like inquisit inquisitory yep. sort of sort of you know like now his mom's gonna rag on him and ask him all these questions or you know he just doesn't want to be there it's not who he is which is all all just comes across in this very basic you know well yeah transition he, he that talks, was the... yeah he, he talks about like i should just drop out and get a job like like you're right like that's that's, that's the whole scene he's just yeah. saying like, it's not like... like we don't have the money and this yeah Go ahead. Intelligent. I think they say in the second or third episode that he was one of their top students. But he's there's a lot of stories like this, especially around my area in the small town where there's this where there's a kid and he's really smart, but he just doesn't have the ambition. And the only thing that's really keeping him in schools is is his parents kind of ragging on him. And uh, they what they want is doesn't isn't necessarily what he wants, but uh, they're kind of keeping him on what you can call the straight and narrow, but not really because he's doing all this sort of uh, illicit, all these illicit activities on the side that could get him expelled. Uh, I'm I'm just curious, Bakeface, because mm-hmm. you you break down things really well. Like with the pace of this this episode, when you see this, the editing, you're seeing uh, the story happening. Uh, what are your thoughts about this so far? Yeah, just like kind of everyone else is saying, I think they really know when to let the viewer focus on the the dialogue that's happening. 
almost gives like your eyes and your senses a break and you can kind of focus on what they're saying and they really know when to lean into you know the higher frame rates and the lots of backgrounds and it's nice to see a economical studio <laughs> get their hands on something like this mm -hmm. yeah man let leave leave the uh high effort for when it's actually required you don't just waste yeah. money making yeah. you know a green you, chick to work in front of the camera <laughs> even a shot like this like the stuff on the other side of the glass just like no detail like barely anything really there it's almost like a like a brush painting <laughs> yeah there's there's very little, little yeah there's very little movement they're just sort of bumping the car up and down like, yeah it's so simple and the way they like uh they create depth really well too in in simple ways like having it's just i guess like you'd compose a shot in a camera right where you have them close up you have like that light the traffic light almost and then you see the building on the right on, in one window it's in focus and then you go across to the front windshield it's out of focus it's just like giving a nice it's just so beautiful i love the lens refraction too like that bit of rainbow yes around the, the prism yeah. the, the yeah, prism yeah. look right like it, it's yeah. it's it's incredibly done like even like the details into the seats like the ripping of the seat the the, the tearing away the like the, the the scratches like just, yeah everything like even into the front it's like it's like and the the shading and the rendering of uh like everything from the right to the left because the sun's coming from the left side it's like perfect like it just it, the light comes in through like like the line right i'm like pointing at the screen like let me use my cursor but like this line <laughs> right here um like it's perfect like it, it matches everything like that's like it also matches the last shot which is pretty yeah. incredible yeah it, it's yeah really really well done i love seeing stuff like that um, and then just like simple little things where the tapping showing like he has ADD where he's just like, or a a h d d with D D whatever you want to call it. Um, just pacing. He's just, he can't sit still. Uh, cause he's like a 17 year old kid. Like he's, you know, wants to get out there and do things that benefit him. Um, yeah. but, but also benefit his mother. He wants to take care of his mother. Go ahead. Amateur. You want to say something? Yeah. I was just saying they're, they're, they're trying to make him like, super relatable you know he's smart yeah. but he's not driven enough and yeah. he's not where he wants to be or he does, he's not where he thinks he should be and then of course every time he tries to it's at the detriment of you know the the parent who supports them like maybe more than they should and they're sort of like spitting in the face of that it's like there's so many stories that are sort of based like on that very similarly but it almost feels like they're going out of their way to make David as relatable as possible, I guess, because like the rest of the world is very difficult to relate to unless you live in yeah. like Vegas or New York or something. <laughs> What's up, Squeaker? <laughs> yeah. What's up, Jana? The, the, other th Jenna. the other thing that I, I, I feel that they're also doing in this scene, especially considering what's <laughs> just about to happen is they're tying in a very, very emotional moment from his perspective um with almost uh obviously i don't want to get into spoilers with obviously everyone knows what's going to happen next we'll discuss it in a mm -hmm. second but you look at how he's now reacting to the state the emotional state of his mum um how he is then going to have that weighing upon him with what comes next because this is the let's say this is the last time that he's going to properly uh interact with his with his only parent by the look of it mm -hmm. so it, it strengthens the kind of like that emotional um impact that this next part this next sequence is going to have yeah even this, I think this this part right here like the background behind her uh it's just everything about it's just beautifully done go ahead yeah. there hostman no I'm just gonna say, I think this uh, sequence, not just this scene, but the one before it and the one after it, they kind of lend to the world building in that they show just how wide the gap between the lower class and the upper class is. There's not yeah. really a whole lot of class mobility. And even when there is the, you kind of have to be doing some stuff that's not on the up and up to keep, to keep up the mobility in some, in most cases, but Let's just uh, let's just see what happens in this next little bit. 
yeah um i'm still marveling at the animation here like with the light referencing and so um going back uh snippet uh david sees this guy with a big huge gatling gun i'm not sure the name of the gun i'm sure there's a name in the in the uh the game itself yeah that's normally um, mounted to a turret yeah thing. so buddy's this got guy's... level nine body to <laughs> yeah <laughs> yes uh and then the he the, the this gang here is called the animals and they're firing upon a uh arasaka ex- executive uh vehicle and they're trying to take it out and they just they don't even care they just shoot through like the, david and his mother's car here and uh start chasing it down so <clears throat> while all that's happening uh they're driving forward and then they kind of uh, well, they're dri- they're driving forward, trying to avoid all the like chaos that's ahead of them, and then David's saying, "Tell his mom to look out," and they crash into the ve- a vehicle in front of them, and it, it just blows the vehicle up. To the to this point here, right here, where David uh, kind of wakes up in a haze, and he's trapped into the into the passenger side with his seatbelt and everything. He can't get out. His mother is lying on the ground, motionless, and this is great. Like it's like I love this perspective because. You could easily show it the other way around, but they show it from his view where like he's, he's upside down looking at his mother. Mm -hmm. Um, I I think that's a a brilliant shot because so many times you would see it the other way around, they would just show the mother lying there and then, and then go back to him, but they actually show it from his uh, view. Um, Yeah. Well, she's, she's not going to be giving us her POV anytime soon. She's, she's out like a light. She's yeah, she like she. At all. Uh, question here. My question is of the plot armor is why didn't she just step on the brakes? Because then uh, you probably could, but you just slide into them. Yeah, I Inertia. think the vehicle was. I think the vehicle was uh, flying backwards anyway because it was yeah. thrown off. So. Yeah, it, they, I think it was a shot with a rocket, was it not? And then it just kind of threw, yeah. got to the front and it was coming backwards towards him anyways. Yeah. And she may have been in shock too, because when that guy just let loose with the Gatling gun, it looked like she was right in the middle of his scatter shot. Like bullets were just whizzing right by her head. So she could have been partially <laughs> deafened by it and uh, just kind of been in shock uh, to the point where she wasn't thinking about anything. Yeah. yeah, and she probably didn't have good credit on the uh, breaking package. <laughs> <laughs> probably not. Uh, oh, so my. we we see the medics show up, and they're talking about, they're just scanning them to see if they're insured. And they say they're not insured, and then they just leave both of them. And the comment that he makes is just like, we'll leave them for the... Um, not the City meat the, wagon. Yeah, yeah, city meat wagon, and I was just like, "Oh, wow! Like this is, uh, this is quite the uh, <laughs> city that you're living in." So, like, well, David's trying to get out. He passes out, and we get to the next scene where David's sitting there, and he's at a, um, a like a clinic. Uh, he's slum. at a ripper doc. He can't afford a ripper. real doctor. Yeah, like he's, uh, and it's like a back alley clinic. It's not anything special, and so. Uh, the doctor comes out and says, your mom is stabilized. She'll be okay. Um, and that, you know, uh, you come back in the morning and we'll see what the results are after, after the, after the night. So <clears throat> he gives David a bag and David heads home. And we see him going through the city, heading home. Now, this is a, a great shot, like from the beginning to where we first saw him when he was leaving, he's coming in and he can't get in, indicating that they they're unable to pay rent on time. He's locked out of the house. Been um, there. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so he kind of breaks in by going in through um, like a little uh, air vent, and he sneaks in th- through the laundry area and bath area. Man, he should just live in New York this City. Is... They let him live there whether he can pay rent or not. Yeah, no kidding. I, I love so... how they sell the dystopia part of the cyberpunk thing here because it's like 
like now we've learned that there really is no sense of humanity here. You're only worth based on like how good your credit score is, essentially. And yeah. like even in your house, you're in this mega tower, which is essentially smashed together apartments where they're all identical, all identical layouts. You know, your shower and your toilet are yeah. labeled on the bloody wall. It's just like it's hell. There's no individuality. The only thing that makes you an individual is like what type of enhancements you chose to get or like what build you have or like what brain dance you like. But outside of that, like there really is nothing. And it and it does seem eerily familiar to sort of like the whole internet, social media, VR, AR crap we're doing now, right? So I think it's a yeah. really good time. For, you, feel, for like, you will live in the pot and eat the box and you feel oh nothing. Yeah, and you'll be happy. Yeah, and you'll exactly. Be happy. Yeah, I mean, so I, I don't know. Happy. Now we can't even define what a man and a woman are. You know, like we're 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 getting eerily close to the cyberpunk dystopia. You know, late stage capitalism. It's all there. <laughs> I feel like we can probably have trans people in the world won't turn to this. But no, I'm not say saying that. Much oh, yeah, all, all things that you guys are saying. It's like you're describing America. Like if someone didn't know we were talking about cyberpunk. You're like, oh, man, there's like these lower class people that have no upward mobility and they just yep. live in the slums and there's no way out. And you're like, that's Chicago. That's crazy because <laughs> all they need is like a good VR headset. And we're pretty much here. It's it's not that far away. We're close. I, man. Exactly. Uh, well, look at L.A., right? What is that? Two oh, mile yeah. by two mile uh, poverty stricken homeless area oh, in dude, L.A. Like Philadelphia that exists to now. New York. In LA. Yeah. Yeah, trying to get yeah, it's some housing. Well. There's there's one other thing I picked up on this scene. I don't know if anyone else picked up on it earlier, but have a look at the state of the apartment. When he's yeah. when he's with his mum in the earlier scene, it doesn't look anything like this. No. So it's almost like someone's come in and just ransacked the place. Mm hmm. Ah, oh, I didn't uh, pick up on that. Is this supposed to be the same day? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. This is the this is all all in one day. Yep. So. The, yeah, the place has been ransacked. Uh, obviously, someone has broken to the apartment looking for something. It's probably the which, landlord trying to look for valuables. That's, that's that's what I was thinking. It's not. Well, it's not. It's, it's <laughs> the yeah, it's this bag that David has found. Um, he has his mother's EMT jacket, which is significant for this whole series because he keeps yeah. what he keeps it to wear. And then we see this bad boy in the in the bag. This big spinal so, uh, cyberware and uh it's called a a military military grade send piston neuralware implant i hope i said that right sandestin sandvestin sandvestin i think sandvestin neuralware implant yeah from the from obviously from um uh Norris from the earlier where he he yeah. kind of went crazy so saying that's indicating that gloria his mother uh was on the scene got a hold of the cyberware because apparently she's selling illegal cyberware on the black market yeah to another individual yes yeah, so uh, uh, mine because it'll be important later yeah uh so david is kind of making some phone calls trying to figure out what it is and then we get to the scene in the morning where david's back to school he's same sequence school. of shots just to add yes. to that the mundaneness yeah. of his routine he, yeah so he's walked to school and then he encounters katsu and the goons and they've been waiting for him and they're ticked off uh because of the day before where everything got shut down they're just basically bullying him saying you don't belong in the school what are you doing? You need to leave. David's like, at this point, David has says, I have nothing to lose, really. And this guy... He, this guy has the, has the weirdest battle cry I think I've ever heard in my yeah, life. Yeah, Katsuo? <laughs> yeah, he's... Like, ah! <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's dumb. And, uh, uh, never it knew the country stupid. twice. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that was great. Wow. I'm sorry, I had to. <laughs> that was beautiful, wow. man. Yeah, do a double take on that. <laughs> do a double. 
so he starts pushing David and he's like basically saying, I hope you have some uh, MMA uh, software in there. And uh, David obviously doesn't. And he starts, he goes to punch Katsuo. He blocks it with ease. And he starts doing this like 100 punch um, scene right here. And he's just kind of reminded me of the the fight scenes in the Matrix. Yes. And boom. Very very Dragon Ball Z style. Yeah. And just lets loose on his face and just basically throws him in the garbage afterwards after he's done beating him and leaves him there to, uh, you know, lick his wounds. So, yeah, I think David's just broken down at this point. He he's ready to give up, and he's wanting to just like, you know, quit this school and and do his own thing. Um, and then we get to this point right here, where he goes and where are we going here? Visits the clinic, and then they tell him that his mother has died, and they mm-hmm. cremated her, or like the option is to cremate her. Um. And so David's learning about his mother dying. So I, I'm assuming this is like, like I don't know what your guys' are thoughts, but I'm assuming that someone found out that she was in the clinic and went and killed killed her, and that he got paid Ooh. to. Yeah, that's that's my thought. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. I thought yeah, she. Maybe. I thought she just succumbed to her wounds. Maybe. Uh, yeah, it maybe. could be a bit of that. Well, look at how I, dirty that clinic is. I wouldn't. I'd rather just just shoot me in the head if I live in Night City and I'm on their discount package. <laughs> yeah, I was about to I'd say just... I, I always I always saw that more of like a world building thing. Like, yeah, their credit is just so bad that they won't even like save them when they easily could. Just adding to that lack of humanity. Yeah. But um, well, yeah. this like the apartment's ransacked, uh, and Tommy pointed out, I and I I witnessed or witnessed it. I noticed it too, and. It kind of led me to the thought, like when he finds out about, about his mother's death and how she's like selling, like she's an EMT and she's taking cyber uh, cyberware and and stealing it and selling it to on the black market to make money to make ends meet. Yeah, she's it only makes chrome. sense. So like Although, this piece. One thing, like, I'm, uh, one thing ahead, I'm not. One thing I'm not clearer about was she was the reason the cyberware wasn't taken because she was carrying it around and the guys who took her jacket and everything just didn't see it and they didn't detect it at the school or was it just in the apartment and the landlord or whoever had sacked the apartment didn't find it or I wasn't quite no, clear on to, that. The only way it makes sense is if, is if the mom had a side hustle where she was extracting this on the scene and selling it on the black market and she obviously yeah. mm-hmm. stepped on someone's toes or, or someone became aware of it. Who didn't have yeah, those right. intentions? I mean, I, I just mean, how did it get from her to David with the entire uh, it was part of her belongings? Mm-hmm. Yeah, but like nobody thought to uh, um, like call the police if they saw it or anything like that. Like nobody oh, detected why, that. She why would they it, care? Um, why would they yeah, care? Dude, after They're not getting the, paid. After seeing the paramedics act like that, dude, <laughs> cops ain't gonna do shit. Dude, the police are basically like a, a publicly funded gang. In this universe, no one wants yeah. to call the, the, the police. Probably wouldn't even turned up. I mean, let's face it; he goes to a ripper dock of all places. They're shady in the in in the best of terms. So the, yeah, the, but they do the kind of have a bit of a coat. Sorry, ripper dock is going to uh, take the device for himself. Yeah, just to add yeah, on to that, there, there would be a bit of a code of conduct because, like, obviously they have they're they're reliant on their clientele. And if they have a reputation of, you know, ripping off their clients or reporting them or whatever, then they wouldn't get any, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's not like, it's not like uh, show breaking or anything, but I'm just like, how did nobody think to like report it to any authorities or like, oh, I'm going to take it for myself if they wound up going through her uh, possessions and finding it or anything like that? I think the paramedics arriving on the scene with what they said was a clear statement to me that everybody in the city acts like that so no matter who you're going to contact this is the treatment you're going to get if like dude the ambulances are like you know the you know the biggest uh, thing you know to aid anyone in a life or death situation it's like i think it's like cops firefighters and then 
the paramedics. And if the paramedics were supposed to like, you know, uphold the huge, uh, the oath that they have to save a life, that's how they acting. No, like, no cops ain't going to do nothing. Firefighters ain't going to do nothing. Everyone's not going to do nothing. Not unless they get paid. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Money, 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 money. I know, I know Noss is saying like, and I know he's heavily invested in the show um, and the game because he loves the game, but he says, no, nah, nobody killed her. She succumbed to her wounds. The doctor even states that she was phys physically exhausted beforehand. I, I get that, but it also makes sense. Like the, the doctor, I think is paid off as well. I think the doctor is kind of like part of like, he's, a, he's in a back alley clinic. He's going to take the money. To, to keep his mouth shut and just tell a story. Just the, it, I think that she was killed off by um, whoever's looking for the um, Sanvestian um, neuroware implant. So, or like this to sell, because like, it's money. Uh, mm -hmm. Even when um, when we get to it, David finds out like he can get like I think it's a hundred thousand. Um, I don't know the money currency that they use, like 10,000 like euro 10, books or 10,000. Yeah. 10,000 euro dollars on the, on your, yeah, on the market. Yeah. Um, people don't snitch to the cops in the universe without a very good reason. Yeah. Um, so uh, that's my theory. I, but I mean, I, I mean, like it, it, it could be just that, but I, it makes sense for him to me because of the way we see the apartment, the way they're selling on the black market. Um, yeah, I don't think at this point they're trying to sell you some kind of conspiracy. I think they're just trying to sort of describe this dystopia and why it's a dystopia. And it's like the, the idea that someone wouldn't like a doctor wouldn't give treatment because, you know, you had the wrong package is just insane. Like even in the worst health care that you could get in the mm -hmm. States. Yep. They would still treat you and ask and bill you later, like, but they would treat you regardless of your insurance status, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So this is it's pretty just terrible. Like the worst of the worst. Yeah. It's pretty terrible, but I can't imagine how much it costs to actually run a trauma team, a, a thing like trauma t team in a world like this, especially if they don't have like a government backing or anything or they're just like a private corporation running on their own fund. I think you know, that, that's everything. the the fucked up part about it is like when you when you actually think about it, it probably costs them not very much to run it because the only people that would have it are very rich people that don't end up yeah. in these situations very often and they probably pay a lot of money to have it. So mm -hmm. like the profit is larger. That's why like systems like this are always so fucked because you have people at the top that pay the most that don't need any services and they have the best services and then the people that need the best services don't have the money to pay. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. yeah. Good reflection of society. This is mm -hmm. my favorite shot in this episode, yeah. though. The fact that you're oh, getting your mother's remains. Stomach is hurting. Of, Kill yourself. Uh, like, you're basically getting your mother's remains from a vending machine. Vending machine. It's oh. like, oh, my God. I felt so a little bit of myself and... die watching that. What's up, anime? Yeah, it's, like, it's, it's, it's sad. It's a sad scene. Like, how, like, it's just... He's it's a very lonely world. It's very grim, gritty. Like it's like you're you're basically nothing in this world the, unless you're the part way of the this world, is, world. With the way this world is structured, like I'm always rooting for the hero. I'm a uh, you know. So in this world, I root for the villains. <laughs> <laughs> well, the hero is the villain in a in a way of looking at it, I guess. Because I like, like, it's the like, whole idea with point, the cyberpunk is no one's allowed to be clean because it's impossible exactly, to be yeah. to be a good guy. Yeah. Everyone needs to get their hands dirty to some degree. Oh, it's okay. just a, just oh, depends cool. there's on like, a, what you value. There's a comic it's, series from Chuck Horse about the trauma team. That's that's interesting. You know, like I I don't know. It's just one of those things where like. I, I kind of get a bit like looking at this show. I get a strong biblical sense. When you're around so much evil, you yourself become <laughs> like evil, unless yeah. you find you know, unless you find a way to get away from it all. And well, when I, I look at you know other character, like well, you know what? I'll bring that up when the characters you know comes in. So I won't say it now, but I yeah. will bring it up later. Yeah, I love it's really, I love this show. Really sad too. I I actually like this better than the game because from what I remember from the story, they make it very like it. 
kind of devolves into very good guys versus bad guys. Viva la revolution, whatever. And this just kind of shows... I didn't shows... get that take from the game at all. Just, just saying. I very much <laughs> felt like a bad guy the entire time. Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, but I maybe that's just me because I like to play as the good guy because I just feel <laughs> guilty making evil decisions in role-playing games. But uh, I, kind of, I really did just get the sense that this didn't feel like some sort of grand scale or hero. This just felt like a story of that could happen to anybody living in this uh, in this kind of terrible, kind of fucked up world. It's yeah. just really, it's just really awful. I mean, you even see the stupid trauma team billboard right there with oh, no, it's we just can a slap them. in the face. A total oh, slap brutal. in the face. Yeah, it's it's so grim. Everything I, around around him. Like it's, I, I, I love these shots though. Like they like they're so. Oh, well, like you're going they, through his routine, and and they're showing yeah. it, it different now. You know, this mundaneness is now it's it's like everywhere he looks is just he's reminded of this. Look at that lighting, like this shit show. Yeah, oh no, that is yeah. You know, you the thing is, uh, go ahead. I was I was just gonna say what I like that you do a lot, Jay, is that when you mm -hmm. stop frame for frame as you go through the show, man, there's like. There's some parts in the show where I'm like, yeah, like, dude, just the lighting, the coloring, the animation, just, it's kind of like you're watching a Studio Ghibli film and you don't want to mm -hmm. just sit there and just watch it and be done with it. You stop it frame for frame and look at all the articulate artwork that was just going to be seen for like 0.1 of a you know, Absolutely. second. Mm -hmm. I wonder if some of this light bloom and like the ambient inclusion we're seeing here, like the way the light is glowing off of the steam or whatever that is smoke whatever did they actually draw it to look like that or did they do that in nuke after the fact i would be uh, i'm pretty, pretty sure it's like arcane where it's done in post okay yeah it was it, it, it if was it was done by so hand, much like, holy time. shit yeah, yeah yeah there are some yeah. artists who can make it kind of shine like this from the page like uh i don't know if you know who david williams is but he's doing a comic book called fearsome and i saw some of the colors for it online and that it was like one of the characters was like this golden warrior and it just looked like it was glowing off my screen you know not even just from the blue light like the the color was like the glowing was actually coming from the page but like bagface said it's most likely done in post yeah airbrush that's exactly it um i i love the color palettes for this this series too like they're it's like it's like we watched a blue eyed samurai we picked that apart the the color palettes for each scene like when we talked to like we were talking about mizu it was very grim the colors were very pale they were blue they were gray then we got to uh, a kemi and all them and the lords it was all bright and vibrant and all that this world it, there's a blend of dark gritty colors with a bright neon uh vibe to it but it, it, it the way they do it it enhances the, the scene, um, like you, you go to the cityscape, it's very open, it's very bright, it's like everything's blue and 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 glorious. But like these scenes right here, like it's just you get like almost a sick knot in your in your stomach as you're like looking at this scene. Like you know how 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 desperate he is, how like gross the, the, the this lifestyle is. Like it, it's it, it it's so well done. I just mm -hmm. I think it's amazing um what's up yeah. there also what to me thanks for joining us brother and it knows when the show knows when the bright colors can become a little too much like just when you're starting to get like okay maybe tone it down a little it does sort of break it back and it just it looks like something that you would see in the world around you but much grimier for the most part yeah it's just this huge emphasis on like everything is synthetic you know, mm -hmm. like there's not even there's not even a bloody tree in the entire city nope. other than like this one yeah. little area. And like everything is like this government constructed, probably very expensive, very well made, but run down, covered in graffiti with neon lights and ads everywhere. You know, it's just it's such a crazy concept that isn't that isn't particularly far fetched. It's it's just, you know, it's mm -hmm. dialing up all the problems with you know, like a modern society, just dialing it all up to 11 yeah. in the worst way. It's, yeah, it is really Cyberpunk's beautiful. been doing this since the 80s. That's the, like that's the craziest part. This, this, this type has been around since the 80s. 
It's reminding Absolutely me of awesome. this one. <laughs> it's reminding me of this one side quest in the game where like you've spent so much time in this concrete jungle with all these lights and ads. And then you run into this Buddhist monk and he just reminds you of the fact that you haven't seen a tree in a while. Maybe you just, just, just sit and think about it. And it's like, Holy fuck, this is getting pretty deep, man. <laughs> like, I, like, next thing you know, you're just sitting there staring at a tree meditating in this video game, and you're just loving it. <laughs> it's like, you're just uh, like, wow, a that's tree. Good world, that's good world building, man. When you get so immersed, you have to, like, take a break and have a little breather. <laughs> I need to touch grass, literally. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and I like how they don't they don't solve the um how does he put the urn down? Oh, just cut okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I hear. Um am I You're here. I can okay. hear you. Here. Yeah, I, I, and then yeah, he's gotta break into his apartment again with his mother his dead mother. Um and that's it's so dark. Like, and then he pulls out his mother, Gloria Martinez, like who's been cremated, like in a brutal way, in like a piece, basically in a like a pop machine, right? Like, and so he's uh, contemplating what to do, and he's angry, like any seventeen-year-old yeah. kid would be. And Katsu is calling him, teasing him about his, you know, his life and his death of his mother, which is pretty it's sick. Classy. Yeah. <laughs> um yeah. And we get a flashback of his mother. He's getting more and more enraged. And then he decides to oh well, there we go. We got this nice lovely scene. So say we got to, say goodbye to my salvation. <laughs> well, I put I, I put it in the thing. It's 18 above. So I mean uh, um then we get to um R Ripper Doc and he's talking to David and because David wants to get the uh, cyberware and put it put it into him the neuralware he wants it to, yeah he wants to go kick buddy's ass yeah he wants to he just say fuck it i'm gonna go for it i'm just gonna get it implanted get some man is double jump man <laughs> yeah and he's, ripper doc doesn't want to do last that he's, i love that like he's, he's got, just like, lost uh, his last connection to the straight and arrow like his mom's gone he's like i'm done I've had my one bad day, and I'm just gonna go berserk. Yeah, yeah. Any uh, any Elden Ring fans on the panel? Hell yes. But he's looking like Godric the Grafted with all these arms hanging. <laughs> <around him>. <laughs> oh. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> oh, he does. Just need him to um, yell it for 13 seconds straight. <laughs> Mid so yeah. I love how the the Ripper Doc is just like all all parts pretty much, but like he's privates are being like used with the uh, like the pumping flashlight uh, while he's doing an XBD. Um, it's a good and, combo, man. Yeah. So that basically this is like the, the ending where uh, David's gonna walk away, and the Killer Doc says, "Okay, I'll do it," and. And then it just kind of well, actually, David says, "I'm just I'm, I'm going to leave then," and that's the end of the episode. So that's episode one. That's how dark episode one is. Um, they didn't show the surgery, really. Damn. No, they showed the surgery in the next in the episode. Second. Yeah, yeah, part yeah, two. Episode. So yeah, general thoughts. Of episode one. So an introduction to this world and everything. Um, I'll start with Bayface because I know. You you had you said you had some comments for this episode, so I'll start with you. Um, not so much for the episodes, more for the series. Oh, oh for the series, okay. But uh, I like I like the first episode a lot. It like great pilot hooked me. It has an amazing pace. It just gets kind of straight to the point, and you can if you've watched enough anime, you can kind of feel out that this is just like here's here's events leading up to the actual show. Like that's the sense that I got, I guess. Um, where like anime does that a lot where like, they'll have like a big, I don't know, kind of character turning moment, like attack on Titan does it really well too. Like the first mm -hmm. episode is, yeah. you know, it kind of just changes the character and then we're in the story after that. So um, I guess I kind of had that sense going into this because I've watched a, too much anime in my life. And I like that <laughs> because it feels like you're just getting through all the 
the vegetables so I can get to the good stuff. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. you're just eating your greens yes. and now I'm like, okay, I'm invested. I'm in kind of thing. Um, nice. Do I have to rank it? Am I giving it a ranking? If you want, you, you're more, yeah, we usually, like the last of the other episodes we've been ranking them. I, I, I don't know why we do it, but we have, but so go ahead, brother. Um, I think I'd probably give this like an 7.5 out of 10. It's, it's really good. It's just uh, a little bleak. I'm not, I'm not a very bleak man. This is just real <laughs> bleak. This show is very bleak. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I've been watching Kate. Have you ever watched Spy Family? Uh, I, I know of it. I haven't watched it yet. So it's just like a super cute anime on Netflix. And I was watching that. And then I was like, oh, I should watch Edge Runners. And that switch going from like a cute, <laughs> like six year old spy yeah. show to this, I was like, oh, yeah. so I would yeah. laugh a little bit. So that's, uh, that probably affects that's my scoring. But flash. yeah, so that's both good though. Both very good. Uh, Tommy, what are your general <laughs> thoughts on episode one, brother? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, really glad that obviously I've, I've been playing the game ahead of watching the tv program because it, it obviously allowed me a little bit more of a head start in understanding the world uh and the scenes and the, build, the building up of the story uh i thoroughly enjoy the way it's drawn the way the characters are moving around within their world within night city and i really love the tie-ins between the game and the tv program um, the characters so far, um, obviously we're, we're starting down this path of seeing, um, uh, the main character, uh, and the, where his journey is going to start going. You can see the vengeful nature, um, building within him. He's angry. He knows he's, um, not got many options. He's got this cybernetic, um, piece of equipment that's could open up many doors for releasing that, that kind of like that anger that's, that's built up. So in, t in terms of first episodes, I would say it's definitely probably eight, eight and a half. Um, it's on its way to uh, obviously setting up the rest of the the rest of the series. Um, lovely drawn, and I really do enjoy the music. Uh, one thing I'm always saying whenever I'm playing yeah. the game, the music really hooks you in. Really Hell yeah. Hooks you in. Yeah, the music uh, is really good. Amateur. Yeah. Um like uh tomby or is it tomby or tomby 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 that makes more yes. sense <laughs> tomby. Um, yeah like tomby i've uh i'm very familiar with the game came into it having already played a lot of it um and for that like excellent fan service for sure um i actually had a weird moment where i was replaying the game after watching this and there's that song um what's it called i really want to stay at your house Yep. which becomes quite prevalent in obviously the show. And it was just randomly playing in a building somewhere that I was walking through in the game. And I actually had to like stop. And I just had this, probably this thousand mile stare for like the entirety of the song as I'm just yep. recollecting everything that happened in the show. And as it just gave me this weird moment. It's like, wow, this is so well tied together. Um, as far as this episode goes though, I have to admit the first time I watched it, I wasn't really sold until sort of like, you know, the montage at the end where, mm -hmm. where I can't remember his name. Was it Kat, Katsu is Katsu. giving him that like horrific phone call. And they're going through that montage of like everything that happened and like, sort of like what's running through his mind. That was, that, that was like the first point where I was actually like, okay, I'm going to continue watching this. Cause that, that was quite good. But like rewatching it, I sort of started to pick up on sort of like the editing choices that, that were present here like you're going through his his sort of routine of going to school i think you do it three times the first two times are basically identical and then the third time is obviously post you know mother being dead or sorry the first time is is normal the second time she's injured the third time she's dead and just the mm -hmm. differences between them and how much character and like world building is being done through that i thought that was very clever um, I mean, as far as the animation goes, I think like the style of it is pretty like middle of the road, um, like anime for like what we've come to expect, at least at this point, I think where it differs 
is uh, just the style the style of the video game that's been brought into the show is very well done. I think you have to give CD Projekt Red a bit of credit for that because just the way everything looks, like we can say, yeah, it looks like Blade Runner. It looks like whatever, right? Um, but I do think there's a lot of elements in it that are quite unique. You know, it's sort of like Times Square in the future, but everyone's either eccentrically wealthy or, or destitute. It's it's a very well um, it's a very well fleshed out sort of dystopia that I think the show it's like you're you're basically you're basically basing a story off of an NPC that you might have like blasted while you were trying to go after your target you know it's 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 a very fascinating concept and I think that's what that what why I stuck with it and it does get quite a bit better moving forward but if I had to rate this episode. Originally, I probably would have given it like a five or a five and a half, but I think I'm going to give it a seven just in the context of like what comes up next and, well, and just how well it serves the story that we already know from the video game and how and how like it drives very well with what's been established. I think they did a very good job and the music's really good. I like it for the most the, part. Um, I'll let Holtzman, Holtzman, you can give your comments about the the first episode here oh um i wasn't i wasn't saying anything i was just kind of agreeing with amateur i didn't know i don't know if he's done or not or yeah yeah, yeah I'm, I'm, I'm good oh, okay yeah i just really i really like this episode it's um if you know anything about uh japanese storytelling they follow uh most of the time a method called kisho tenketsu which is the introduction the development the structure, the twist, and the conclusion. And this kind of follows this really well. It introduces us quickly to a very uh, violent and depraved world it, in, and the character that we're supposed to be following into it. It develops his uh, relationship with the world. Then it gives us the twist that's his, as the Joker would say, one bad day where he loses the only thing kind of tethering him to a uh, normal, I guess you could call it life. So he just starts this kind of spiral downward and then, well, leads to a very uh, interesting conclusion, from what I can remember. <laughs> yeah, so it's, uh, um, I thought it was a really effective episode. It's not the greatest pilot I've ever seen. That would that would be Deadwood, the Deadwood pilot. But I'd give it an eight out of out of ten. I have to see the rest of the series to give you like uh, my score may go up or down depending on how it shakes out. Okay. Uh Zach, are you good? Yeah, um I think uh you know, I'll call it there. You know, we'll see how you guys like it. Full screen me, baby. What's up, Sammy? <clears throat> oh hell yeah. yeah. Oh nice. Yeah. That's great. You were able nice. to do that just what hour thirty? That's nuts. That's crazy. I yeah. mean I try. I try to really. I try, I try to really, pencil. Yeah. yeah, you really captured a look in the eyes there. Yeah, like there's like a bit of acting going on in that. That's excellent. That's killer, yeah. dude. It's expressive. Yeah. Seen. Oh, and the the highlight, like the sheen on the hair. That's amazing. It's very very cool, man. Yeah, it's it's tough because the whole anime. Um, I'll just keep zooming in so you guys can keep looking at like the smaller details, but, uh, the anime style, it's, uh, you know, I don't draw like that. So I have to try to find yeah. a certain medium where I can go ahead and, you know, figure out how to approach, you know, these characters as these episodes are going to go. So I love um, how much, I love how much motion you have in there. Like he's, his little cross necklace is flying up. Yep. You know, all of all of the the sleeves are like bunched up, and then you got that hard collar. Even as even as suspenders are like flying out the sides, it's very cool, man. It's a yeah. lot of detail there. That's great. That's phenomenal. I'm trying the perspective to perspective like, of the collar. Mm. Yeah, I'm trying to like. Um, <clears throat> I'm trying to as the this these episodes go on, I got to find an attribute that really um, complements each characters with what they're capable of doing. And I got to figure out how to do that pretty fast. So for like next week, you know, depending on what character you guys want me to do for the draw next week, I got to figure out 
what that character is really good at doing and try to implement that. And honestly, I just call it luck at this point. How you know, having to be on stream and draw, it's a little nerve wracking when I got like what 50, 80 people, you know, watching me. And so like if I make a mistake, you know, you guys are gonna see that mistake. So I'm always like stressing out like beyond that. Zach, Ed, Zach there are no mistakes. There's only happy accidents. Yeah. Oh, don't give me that. <laughs> <laughs> No, man, I think you've established yourself as like a world class, like comic book artist, man. You got nothing to worry about. Yeah. Yeah. As far as I'm concerned. <laughs> like, you. Way better than I am. I can barely manage a uh, little doodle of Oppenheimer's face <laughs> without making it look terrible. <laughs> Thank you. So, so Zach, what are your, your, what's your rating for this first episode? To be honest, uh, I would have to rate it a five because this wasn't the episode that grabbed me. It was kind of like when you recommended it to me and you're recommending bangers uh, every time, uh, you know, I try to figure out the next thing to watch. But um, it has nothing to do with the artwork. Uh, it was it was more of the pacing of the story uh, for me. It was just it was so fast. And I could tell they did it because the people that were making it were basing it off the people that know the uh, the material already. Um and that's that's pretty much it. Like I said, or the intro scene got uh, confused me, and I had to watch it again. Um, it he had, he had certain things like uh, there were certain things about it where I wanted to see personally for me maybe more of David just doing some personal things where you know you got to travel his little journey to school, but I wanted to see more of the uh, the the evil of the city what it's uh what it's capable you know show me a little bit more of that but that's just like nitpicking stuff again it's because i'm new to it i rate it uh five it's really i think episode two or three is what kind of like reeled me in a little bit more because uh, mm -hmm. my yeah, favorite sure. character is the one is the chick that david saw on the rafters with the white hair lucy no. yeah. Lucy. Yeah, lucy yeah dude I love her design. She gives me um, Oni or Oni. She she reminds me of that character. Um, <clears throat> a, uh, same thing with the ghost in the shelves. She's just got that nice, cool look, and she's got a good character design. I'm a sucker for those. Yeah, she's the oh, yeah. classic femme fatale put into uh, a very uh, futuristic world. Thank you for she's saying that, because I was trying to think of that term, and I couldn't. <laughs> I'm like, heroin? Well, no, that's not right. Yeah. Let me a good film noir. My, well, my general thoughts on this episode, like, I've seen it, like, eight times, and knowing the series and then reflecting on episode one, I think this is one of the better episodes, to be honest, because it sets up why David becomes the person who he becomes later on. Um, I love the shots of... Him going to school, you see the chaos uh, in Santo Domingo. You see everyone on their XPDs, uh, like in the streets. You see the, the bums. The, as you see him, like like the the transition going from the the <clears throat> dark part of Night City in Santo Domingo into the corpse, uh, into night like the the elite part of um, Night City at at. Um, What's that? Uh, Corp Square. Uh, what, I forget the name Corporal of it. Corporal Plaza. A, a, Arisa, a, Corporal Plaza. Arisaka okay. is the company that like owns yeah. everything. It's all busy and vibrant. There's tons of people. Then the next time you see him going to school, there's less people, but you still see a little bit um, around him. And then the last shot, there's no one. There's absolutely no one when he's coming home to, 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 to bring that emotion out uh, in that sequence. So I, I really love how they, they bring all that out in this episode. Uh, I love how like he's just desperate and and alone. Um, he's mad. Like you got a kid teasing him about his dead mother. His mother was put into like a basically a coke machine and cremated. Uh, it, it's a I thought it was a really well done episode. You got to see the chaos. You, like his mother laying on the ground, like from the very beginning when she dies, laying on the highway, to from the trauma care just dumping her saying she's not insured and then um you know take her take he has to take her to a back alley med clinic uh she's 
she's dead. Uh, he's the doctor saying it's because of the injuries, which I, I, I just don't believe in like watching the series numerous times. There's a lot there. It's, it's jammed into this episode. And I, I thought it was really, really well done. I would say it probably eight and a half, nine for this episode. Um, hmm. just cause it sets everything up when you look at it, when you go through all the whole series and you look back, you're really like, you, you really understand why David is who he is. Yeah. Um, and I, I really respect what they did in this first episode. So, um, I would give it a, like an eight and a half, nine. So, I mean, the, the animation's top notch. Like, like, like we were talking about, like the, the, like the car to the, the, the lighting, everything is just incredibly done. So like studio trigger, like beautiful. Um, that's my general thoughts on it. Uh, anything else you guys want to talk about? Like, cause we're going to next week, we're going to be doing episode two. Um, anything else you guys want to quickly mention? Yeah. I didn't really realize how much, um, how much the first episode is referenced later. I guess, I guess we'll get into that later, but, um, Mm-hmm. It is doing a lot of groundwork. I think Bagface put yeah. it best when he said, you know, it's like eating your vegetables first. Because, mm-hmm. like, you don't realize it now, but they are good for you, and you'll you'll be glad you did later. Um, <laughs> but, uh, one, one, like, one of the things... Right. One of the <laughs> things I, I, I do think about it is, um, like, this versus Arcane as far as not needing to have played the video game to sort of pick up on like most of what's happening i think arcane does a better job in that where like it's almost better if you haven't played the game or are completely unaware of it because like you can't like it won't be a misfire for you right like you have no expectations coming into it whereas this it's like they're expecting you to have played the game right and if you have played the game it's that much better because like where it would normally be confusion like for someone who hasn't played the game, all of a sudden, like someone who has and is very familiar with it, like the hair standing up on the back of their neck, they're just like, "Oh, this is so cool! This is just like the blah blah blah." You know, yep. you don't get any of that. Um, you, you know, if you have only, it, uh, right? if only a certain uh, video game, <coughs> Apex Legends, would actually make a show. <laughs> you get some fans to watch. Second that. or third time you mentioned that, yeah. uh, Sammy. This is on net. This is on Netflix, brother. Netflix. Go check that out. It's it's I I love it. Um, but again, I'm kind of a, hey, what's up there, Corey? Thanks for joining us. Uh, I'm kind of like an anime nerd too. Like, like, uh, big face. I love watching my anime. Yeah. See, so I'm completely <laughs> agnostic. I've, I watched Dragon Ball Z and Pokemon as a kid and that's basically the extent. Oh, and Yu-Gi-Oh or whatever that's worth. <laughs> uh, but I mean, I, I watched the series before the game. You fell so right I into was... my trap card. <laughs> oh fuck yeah and i put it in defense mode to end my turn fuck um show, man i watched the series before i played the game i just bought the game like a couple of weeks ago um so like i lo- was digging the series before the plane and, and we were talking in the back room before this like there's a big difference between the game and, be- and from the series because the game it, it's all about the world and 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 how you get around in this world uh, and and everything that's in it where this is all about society in that world you're getting a little story arc inside um one part of night city or yeah night city so and you're following david and his path uh, and i think that's a a big difference between the game and and uh, the, the animated series or the anime um and i really I, I i like the anime a lot the game is phenomenal but i mean I'm really, I really like the anime. Uh, it's the, the action in this is peak. Like it's, it's Arcane's really, really, really good. Like it's top notch. Uh, but like when it comes to the action scenes in this, it's like, it's for 2D, especially, it's amazing. Yeah. You have uh, to get so bonus points because... for 2D because they actually drew it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The action <laughs> scenes in this one are really bloody and wait, visceral. Wait. I think that, uh, but in our, is, huh? is, is, are we are we assuming that arcane wasn't drawn not is frame by frame not frame uh, i'm sure yeah. they storyboarded no, and it's some sure it's frame by frame and like i've watched have you watched videos on how they animated that show yep like i'm pretty sure it's 2d frame by frame and then they go over top like with multiple yeah. layers of digital so i'm pretty sure it is frame by frame it's still keyframe animation at the end of the day but there are a lot of hand drawn things that are like attached to things that are moving with keyframes. So like 
they're not you know they're not redrawing the entire character model for each frame i think they did though i think that's how they got the style of arcane it depends like, on the frame oh uh, does the, it oh, all the right, textures all right. that are strapped to the character model so like the lines on yeah, the skin the, and like yeah, the hair and stuff extra. yeah that sort of extra extra stuff they probably would have to go in and like doctor it a bit. There's a well, a bit. There's a lot of fucking doctoring that they have to do. Yeah, it's I I would I would put it a couple tiers above, basically anything that Pixar's put out in like the last fucking twenty years. But oh yeah, oh easy. When you compare easy. like, yeah, like when you compare anime to CG, and a lot of anime is, from what I understand, is going the CG route. You like yeah. you just. You draw the character model, you pose it, which takes a while. You make all your different poses, and then you basically tell the computer, "Okay, go from this pose to this pose." Right? Yeah. You just give it a, give it a route, which is exactly how and Arcane was done. Yeah. But they just, you know, they had like eleven hundred poses instead of like four. Right. Mm -hmm. It's quite a bit different. I don't think comparing the two are even like beyond the intellectual exercise is even <laughs> worth it. But yeah. Yeah, even like with Blue Eye Samurai, they use CG for the fight scenes. So, yeah. but I, I do yeah. hear that sometimes from people who aren't fans of anime. They're like, "Oh, that seems so lazy, and like things don't move." And it's like, "Yeah, because it, it's it's all been drawn. <laughs> like, it's like Bugs Bunny style, man. They're not using cells, but like, yeah, it's so much more work to do two D. And and some well, it is more work, but you can achieve more them... with CG." Jake Goodwin says a lot of modern anime is done with inverse kinematics. Hmm. Yeah, which is like someone, will, I think it's just someone acting it out and then you draw it based on the reference. Is that what that is? I'm I, not even I'm, sure. I think I so. Want, I don't want to talk out of my ass here. Um, <laughs> they use technology. So, <laughs> uh, I want to thank you guys for joining me tonight doing uh, the premiere of Cyberpunk Edge Runners. Uh, it was a great. A great time uh let's go around the horn quickly bag face where are you going to be for the next week anything special coming up i don't think i got anything for the next week uh i'm just working on my channel again because scene invaders it has a little break before we hit on a next show uh, which is going to be on april 5th but yeah, yeah until then i'm just chilling hanging out with the gooch that's all i got always always word word yes well, you know, I've been wanting you on here for a long time. You just schedules are just, you know, not working. Oh out, man, I way. and like, I thought I, I thought I was gonna catch up in Arcane, and then you guys were on like episode six, and I was like, man, I gotta do like six episodes. And then it just gets <laughs> so much further and further away, and yeah, and then I gave up. But this, this I can do. Yeah, I'm excited. <laughs> yeah. Each episode is only like 25 minutes or something. 25 minutes. Oh, yeah. it's beautiful. Well, yeah. like 23 if you cut the credits in the intro. Oh, oh, that's, oh yeah. That's, that's that definitely saves me time, dude. I feel yeah. that feel that so uh, actually i gotta ask you guys what character should i do for next week for cyber oh lucy lucy, lucy. lucy. Oh, all yeah. right Music right i'm yeah. writing that down lucy it is um tomby where are you going to be for the next week i know you're playing tons of video games you've been doing a lot of uh live streaming with uh the gameplay so yeah so you gonna be? I'm, I'm pretty much constantly live streaming with games at the minute because there's just so much so much entertainment there to be had um, I'm going to be carrying on through Cyberpunk. Quite a few of us are playing Helldivers 2 at the minute. Um, so that's certainly absorbing a lot of my time. Uh, I've got some Final Fantasy 14 and uh, World of Warcraft MMORPGs to uh, crack through. But for the next week, I'm on annual leave. So uh, I'm going to have some uh, some more time, time home, time with the family. And got a new podcast coming out next uh, Wednesday. So uh, keep your ears nice. on the ground, guys. Yes. Uh, so go check it out. And by the way, please, if you're watching this, subscribe to all these lovely gentlemen here. They put out some great content. Um, and, and you'll be here next Tuesday as well, uh, doing uh, Scavenger's Rain. Scavenger's Rain. Hell yeah. yeah. Still have so to watch amateur, that show. <laughs> amateur, uh, I'd ask you, but you're you're leaving the country. You're yeah, going I'm, on a vacay. I'm trying to save some money by uh, spending a month in Mexico. Or not Mexico, South America. So Nice. Yeah. Yeah, Canada is so expensive. You save money by going on vacation. <laughs> <laughs> yup. Um, well, have a great trip, brother. I hope well, you have a good you. time. I'm on yeah. a I'm on a seven three seven max. So fingers crossed. <laughs> oh man. 
I'll oh, say my gosh. prayers for you, man. Yeah. That's terrifying. It's not Southwest as well, is it? And I am sitting in front of the door plug, which is Oof. fucking amazing. Oh, no. Ooh. Yep. I'm going to be wearing uh, my seatbelt the whole way. Oh. <laughs> uh, Hostman, uh, where are you going to be for the next week there, brother? Uh, I'll probably be back here for Edge Runners. I might pop up on uh, Mr. B's Sunday. No, no, I can't. No, never mind. Scratch that. But I'll probably just be back here on Edge Runners next week. And then I finally decided that when I was recording lines for my Censored 11 video, I didn't think it was up to snuff. So I'm just going to scratch that and focus on my has-been hotel review because I got a lot to say on that. And I'll just be I'll just be around until then. You may see the video mid-April if I'm lucky because I finally found a way to record the footage that doesn't involve me sailing the high season and eventually and possibly having my computer... Uh, broken into like uh like i'm buying bootleg software from ripper doc <laughs> oh bro you need to you need to get a virtual machine running for that my dude <laughs> that's what they're for <laughs> yeah, just sand, sandbox your uh, equipment spin up a vm and uh zach where are you gonna be brother uh, this weekend i'm gonna be uh going to my daughter's christening down in jersey um, when I come back, uh, I'll be back Monday night, um, ready for the next scavengers rain drawing. And, uh, it's funny is cause all you guys want me to do the, uh, that weird green thing that was like that birthing, you know, and then it died like after it was just came alive in the, in the stick tree. So yeah, I gotta do that. But yeah, no, honestly, like. Yeah, dude, I, I got to thank you again for keep having me on these shows because, dude, like, man, my hand's just not resting. It's not, it, it's, you're not letting me rest. And, uh, well, I hope it's from drawing. That's what yeah, no, saying. it's definitely. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 he's no. got, he's got the automated flashlight. He's good. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So uh, the only thing is, uh, you know, every episode, you know, we're going to be on this for a while together and I'm going to have quite a few drawings. Like, dude. I got six from Arcane. I'm going to have 12 or 10 for Cyberpunk. And I'm going to have like seven or eight for Scavenger. So like, what am I going to do with all that? It's just going to keep stacking up in my corner. Uh, corner you thing. got 10. I'm not, I'm not going to lie. I kind of want to purchase the uh, Echo one from you. <laughs> oh, dude. they're all. I mean, they're all for sale if anybody's interested. Definitely. Nice. Yeah. I will have do to like do a, a uh, giveaway day. For like yeah. the, the final episode, someone yeah. could pick one or something. Yeah, we gotta yeah. figure it out. Sign it. That'll that'll be worth a ton of money someday. Oh, yeah, so, oh, I ain't that will big be. of an artist. <laughs> oh, it will be. Oh yeah. Um. Well, I, I, guys, thank you so much again, and to the chat, you guys are awesome. You guys, you guys rock. I appreciate you joining us tonight. Uh, had a blast. Uh, as for me. I will be busy uh, I'll, Saturday night. I'll be on Saturday night hypnosis with the crew as usual. Uh, next Tuesday, we'll be doing Scavenger's Rain, uh, 10 p.m. Eastern. Wednesday, I'll be, I don't have anything. I did have a, a guest lined up, but that got canceled. So I'll be free on my birthday. So I don't know what I'll be doing for that day. Um, and then Thursday, we'll be right back here uh, doing on another house. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Thursday, we'll be right back here doing Cyberpunk Edge Runners, uh, episode two. Um, so I want to again say thanks to everyone. Uh, we'll catch you guys next week. Uh, come check us out next Tuesday for Scavengers Rain and uh, have a nice long, uh, nice Easter. So Happy take care, Easter, everyone. everyone, and see you, Happy Space Easter. Cowboy. Happy Easter. <laughs>